Good morning. We are in the season of Easter, so we begin with saying he is risen and responding with he is risen indeed. Alleluia. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's great to be in God's house with you. It's great to have everybody join us via social media as well. And I want to encourage you, those of you who are joining us to use the prayer app, which is embedded on the website. We would love to pray with you and pray for you. So please enter your prayer requests. The majority of people we're praying for are not members of the church. So don't feel bad about entering a prayer request for somebody who uh, is not a member of our church. We would love to pray with you and uh, pray for you. Today is a very special day. And um, one of the things that we are going to do today uh, in our worship, <clears throat> excuse me, is we are going to begin uh, with uh, going back to welcoming each other and greeting each other with the peace of the Lord. We stopped doing that because of COVID, and it's time that we start doing that again. And uh, I'd like to encourage you to greet those uh, uh, who are sitting around you with the peace of the Lord as we begin our worship. But before we do that, I want to wish a happy Mother's Day and Grandmother's Day to all of our moms in our congregation this morning. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, let's rise now and let's greet those around us with the peace of the Lord. And uh, as uh, Gerardo and Deline come forward to lead us uh, with John in our opening song, I want to encourage you, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for today. Thank you for godly mothers. Thank you for your blessings in our lives. Thank you for continuously uh, showing us and sharing with us your love and your mercy, uh, especially in times where we may feel like we're all alone and things are difficult. We thank you, Father, for your grace uh, it, is, it never runs out. And so now is the time to worship, and we come to worship you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
We make our beginning now in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to kneel or to be seated as you are most comfortable and desire. We're going to take a moment to confess our sins, to hear God's words of forgiveness, and then we will continue our worship with our responsive praise from hymn 790, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God our Father, seeking his forgiveness through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, creator of all that was, is, and will ever be, we confess to you that we fall short of the calling that we have received from you as your dearly loved children. We have struggled to share the reason for the hope we have in you. We have not always responded to others with gentleness and respect. We have failed to live and share the love we have first received from you. Forgive our sins for Jesus' sake and lead us to live lives that reflect your indwelling presence. Our God hears our prayers and forgives our sins because of Jesus' perfect life, death, and resurrection. At the command of Christ and through the power of the cross and the empty tomb, I forgive all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in his peace. Alleluia. Amen. Please let us rise. We have confessed. We've heard God's words of forgiveness. Let us respond joyfully. be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please let us be seated for our first reading. First reading for the sixth Sunday after Easter is from Acts chapter 17. While Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus saying, may we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting for you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the object of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, 
to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way towards him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading for the sixth Sunday after Easter is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who reviled your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. <clears throat> Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please let us rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. 
Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please let us be seated. Our children are invited to go with Mr. Nick to Children's Church, which is right next door in the fireside room. And we're going to continue with our sermon hymn, Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice. He is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for today. Thank you for your love and your mercy. Father, we thank you for godly mothers. We thank you, Father, for their patience with us, their joy in us, their guidance by the power of the Holy Spirit for us. And Father, we also lift up to you those who did not have the best of mothers and for whom this day is a, is a difficult day. And so, Father, we pray for all people that they would know your grace and that they would know your mercy and that they would know that regardless of the situations that we find ourselves in in life, that you are love and that you continuously and continually pour out your love to us. We thank you for your love that you show to us in worship. Bless us now, Father, through your word and the work of the Holy Spirit, that this faith that you gave to us would grow, be fruitful, and would prosper and bless those around us, Father, even as we seek to honor and glorify you. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name and all of God's children, we all say, Amen. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever given something to someone that they already had. Has that ever happened in your life? You know, it's something that I think we all try to avoid doing, right? That as we think of, you know, what would somebody like? We think to ourselves, now, what don't they have? Certainly, what have I not given them already myself personally? And yet, in the gospel reading for today, it appears that Jesus is, in fact, giving to the disciples someone whom they already have. Let me read for you again John 14, 16, and 17. 
Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. Now listen to this. You know him, present tense. You know him, for he is dwelling with you, present tense. And he will be in you. You see, sometimes Christians wonder, they ask themselves, well, when did Jesus give the Holy Spirit to the church? Was it at Pentecost? Was it the day that he was raised from the dead? Um, when he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. When does this happen? Is there maybe a contradiction going on here? One thing that we all need to understand is that these believers, just like you and I who are believers today, these believers already had the Holy Spirit before they had faith. Believers already have the Holy Spirit before they have faith. Why do I say that? Because it is the Holy Spirit who works in us to have faith. And so the progression is first the Holy Spirit, then the gift of faith within us. You see, when we think about God's love for us and why Jesus is talking this way, perhaps it's helpful for us to remember that just as we tell someone that we love them, even though they already have heard that, and why do we do that? Because we want them to remember that. So also, what Jesus is saying here today reminds us that the Holy Spirit had already been at work in the life of Christ, and in the life of the disciples. If you go back to Luke chapter 1, you'll see that the Holy Spirit indwelt John the Baptist when he was in utero, when he was inside his mother's womb. He was completely filled with the Holy Spirit, Scripture says. And then it says something very interesting, that when Mary came, that then John the Baptist, who was inside his mother's womb, that he leapt with joy. And it says then that his mother was also likewise filled with the Holy Spirit. And Zechariah, John the Baptist's father, who sometimes gets a bad knock for uh, questioning the angel sent to him that was sent to describe how Jesus was going to come to this earth and what John the Baptist's role would be, that Zechariah also is described in Luke chapter 1 as having been filled with the Holy Spirit. And let us not forget that Jesus' own conception, right, is accomplished by the Holy Spirit who overshadows Mary. And it's the Holy Spirit who is also there at Jesus' baptism in Luke chapter 3. And it's the Holy Spirit who then leads Jesus into the desert in Luke chapter 4. And when the 72 return from their short-term mission trip that Jesus sends them out on and tells Jesus everything that has happened, all the wonderful miracles and the preaching and the teaching, it says there in Luke chapter 10 that Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. And when he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, he praised his Father in heaven in perfect Aramaic, not in some sort of gobbledygook that nobody could understand. No, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and all could understand clearly what it was that he was saying. You see, all three persons of the Trinity have been working since before Adam and Eve and are working today. And so Jesus is reminding the disciples that he's not going to leave them alone, no matter what their circumstances look like. And Jesus wants you to know that today also, that no matter what challenges, what difficulties you're going through, he has not left you alone as an orphan. And I think this is probably one reason why we love our mothers so much because they personify that often in our lives. They are always there with us, encouraging us and guiding us and and, uh, helping us to get through our difficulties. 
You know, it's interesting when you look at the Gospel of John, that John, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, devotes 20% of his Gospel to what happens on this one night, on Maundy Thursday. Why? Why does John do this? What makes Maundy Thursday of Holy Week so important, so special? Because Jesus is about to go away. Jesus is going to be crucified, and he's going to be buried, and then on the third day, he will be raised from the dead. But then, 40 days later, after his resurrection, he will bodily ascend into heaven. So Jesus is saying here to the disciples what he has already said, and what he always will say, that you will not be alone, that God will be with you, the Holy Spirit will guide you, and will comfort you. And so that's what we see in worship today, that God is at work in worship, repeating himself, even as Jesus did on that day, repeating himself over and over again throughout the order of service, right? In confession and absolution, we confess and we hear God again repeat to us, your sins are forgiven. Why does God repeat this to us? Why does he serve us in this way in worship? Because we need to be served in this way. We need to hear that we are loved and forgiven by him. God works in worship through the Lord's Prayer. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Why? Because this is the prayer that he teaches, and he tells us that we should, in fact, pray this way. And of course, God is at work in communion. Every week we come and we have the opportunity to receive the Lord's Supper because God works at this table. He gives us his son's body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, for the strengthening of our faith. You know, a big part of leaving your loved ones for a trip is reminding them to do what they are supposed to do. If you've ever had that experience of going on a trip where you're going to have to leave your family, for example, you know that you gather your children to you and you tell them, now, make dad proud while I'm gone. Do what your mother tells you. Stop fighting with your sister. When I get back, I want to hear all kinds of good reports. And Jesus says pretty much the same thing in the text for today. He says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, so not just has them, not just knows them, but whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And Jesus acknowledges that he is no different, right? He also has to do what he should. And so Jesus says in the text for today, I, that's Jesus speaking, I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Today is Mother's Day. This past week, I was listening to contemporary Christian radio, K-Love, and the DJ who was on shared a statistic that was kind of eye-opening to me. And that is that this year, the average Mother's Day gift, guys, are you ready for this? The average Mother's Day gift is going to cost $275. Which brings me to my next point. Do you know what the difference between Mother's Day and Father's Day is? Apparently, $250. <laughs> <laughs> Godly mothers do everything they can to get you to do the right thing. God bless godly mothers. Where do moms get this? Moms get this from God. Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Now, you know, that word draw can be misleading for us who speak English. Because in the English language, in our vocabulary, when we hear that the Father will draw us, what we are tempted to think is that the Father woos us, the Father entices us, and then somewhere in there that we respond, 
that we invite Jesus into our hearts, that we participate in our salvation. Yes, he woos us, but it's really, in the end, it's up to us. But there's really nothing that could be further from the truth, because this word, which is unfortunately so often translated as draw, what it really means is to drag. And so we find this exact same word in Acts chapter 16, when it says that Paul and Silas were drug into the marketplace where they were going to be confronted about their missionary activity. So let me ask you to perhaps to help us to understand this a little more clearly. When we say that we will draw water from a well, do we think that, that, that drawing the water from the well is a process in which we peer down into the well and say, now is a good time to come up. Water, decide today to come into my bucket and decide to, from the bucket to, be pour, to pour yourself into this cup so that I can have some. Or when a, a plow is drawn by a horse through a farmer's field, does that plow have any choice in the matter? Well, of course it doesn't. And this is how God works in our lives. You see, only those the Father calls to the Son can receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, the Father, the Father will give you another helper to be with you forever. Who is this helper? And why forever? The helper is the Spirit of truth. And why forever? Because we will forever need God's presence in our midst, his grace, his mercy, his encouragement as we go through life in this fallen and difficult world. The Father will give you another helper to be with you forever, the very spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. The world in this verse refers to all those who are not yet saved. They are lost in their trespasses. And so we are reminded that it's God's grace that saves us. And it's God's grace also that sanctifies us, that makes us holy. Our salvation from beginning to end is 100% God's grace. You see, we like to think, I allowed God to entice me. But no, the fact of the matter is, you were drug. And that's why smart moms get their children baptized as babies because then there's less back talk from them. Amen? <laughs> and mom's job isn't over with baptism. No, she earns her paycheck every day of your life. So thank mom. Thank mom and thank God for giving us their same love over and over every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please let us rise now for the confession of our faith in the words of the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please let us be seated for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the new life and salvation with which you have brought beauty into our lives and our world. Again, through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray that you open the ears of all who hear your word 
and that this salvation come to many in true repentance and faith, the gift of your own Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, send your Spirit mightily, especially upon those called to preach, proclaim, and teach your life-giving word. Guide all pastors, teachers, and servants of the church to be faithful in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all who bear the authority of government in our land, Give your blessing that tranquility and peace rule our days. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. When suffering for your truth comes our way, remind us of the certain victory that is ours by our baptism into Christ. Give us the vision of your mercy and grace that we endure any opposition to the true faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we lift up to you the people of Ukraine that peace and freedom would be restored to their land. Also those who are sick or mourn, especially Marilyn, Teresa, Sharon, Jean, Carol, Diane, Russ, Amy, Teresa, Ellie, Jeremiah and Katie, Leilani and Jean, Lisa, Ellen, Nancy, Laura, Lindsay, Chris, Eric, Stephen and Renata, Lori, Jennifer, Mark, and little Miles. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and praise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with our preparation to come to the Lord's table. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. These are the true words of God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed, when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and we magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and joyfully singing. prepare our hearts to come to the Lord's table. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, 
to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took the unleavened bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples. And then this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, take and eat, because this is my body, which is given to you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. So do this as often as you will eat this in remembrance of me. The same way also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, because this cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of many. Do this as often as you will drink this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your bodily resurrection from the dead, your bodily ascension into heaven, and your bodily returning for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us also to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Welcome to the Lord's table. I want to invite those who are on this side, uh, starting with Gretchen, to come around to the back over here. And those who are on this side, starting with Gerardo and Deline, to come around to the back over here.
We lift up now our prayer of thanksgiving. Let us give thanks. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Guys, we have a couple of announcements real quick. Um, John, do you have anything for us regarding choir practice? Awesome. And practice is? So is that today then? That's today. Okay, good. So if you like to sing, come to choir practice. Gerardo. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, last night we have uh, the, our woman ministry uh, worship. So uh, we uh, have a, a good group of uh, from North Chicago. Uh, uh, the, those families who are uh, coming to our church. So thank you for uh, all those who are helping us in the ministry. And uh, thank you for your prayer. And also we are uh, keep visiting some families in North Chicago. Uh, we are still uh, knocking the doors and, and asking for prayer. Uh, also we uh, start working with the uh, Prince uh, of Peace Garden. In, in Waukegan. So we start already this week, and this coming week we're going to uh, start uh, also cleaning more uh, more uh, that uh, lots. So thank you very much for your prayers and your support. Ger Gerardo, before you, before you go, uh, I just want to add something to what Gerardo said. I uh, was so blessed last night to see Gerardo and Deline taking a couple of Hispanic families around through our church. And one of the first places Deline took the women was right here into the sanctuary and showed them uh, our sanctuary and took them on a tour of the church last night. It was such a blessing to see that, to see the fruits of your labors. And Gerardo and Deline were here with the Hispanic ministry till 10 o'clock last night. Can we give God a praise clap? <laughs> Amen. God is doing amazing things. Uh, I got a letter, in, we got a letter in the mail this past week. And uh, we got in it a check. I made a photocopy of it. I gave the real one to Marie for, to give to Steve. But we got a check here for $5,000. Uh, and this is the uh, grant money for the grant that I wrote for our Hispanic ministry. So we've gotten that check now. And we praise God for that. Also, Jan wrote, Jan Bersano wrote a grant application for $4,000 for uh, the Redeeming Life Ministry, and we were selected out of our church body at, at nationally to receive that. So uh, we will be receiving that check shortly and presenting that to the Redeeming Life Ministry. And the uh, keynote speaker for Redeeming Life Ministry, she will be our guest on uh, Life Sunday, and she will share an update, and that's in January of this coming year. I um, want to wish a happy Mother's Day again, and we want to welcome all women of all ages, all women, to uh, take a gift that is for them uh, in the entryway. And then uh, next weekend, we're going to be celebrating Asher's birthday. And if you haven't seen the YouTube video uh, celebrating Asher's ministry in our midst, um, I want to encourage you to watch that video and see the testimonies. Uh, it's just very, very powerful. Much thanks to Craig Mattis and his team for helping us put that together. And then uh, May 21st, uh, the women are invited to a circuit gathering for the LWML, Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Uh, that's 11 congregations uh, in this geographical area. It'll be at Lord of Glory. There's going to be a uh, project. Uh, these women always are very hardworking. They're going to do a project when they get together, and they will have lunch then. Uh, there's information on the uh, information board out in the entryway. God is doing a lot of great things, and we're seeing him hard at work at faith. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's rise for our closing hymn, 596, All Christians Who Have Been Baptized. Thank you. 